Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make scarf joints using a table saw, a handful of spring clamps, a super simply constructed jig, and a really simply constructed work table. Now, I like this particular method of scarfing because not only is it much quicker and much more reproducible, but I think it's a lot more accurate than a lot of the other ways I see people making scarf joints. We are, however, going to be using a table saw in a way where it's really hard to set up kickback protection or feather boards. So if that doesn't seem safe to you, don't do it. Remember that table saw safety is your responsibility. Now, just a quick refresher on what a scarf joint is. Basically, what you're doing is cutting reciprocal tapers like this so you can glue them together so you can turn shorter wood into longer wood. Now, this is something I almost never do because I live in a part of the world where I can get long clear lumber and I would always do that even if the long clear lumber was much more expensive because it's going to be stronger and it's going to flex more evenly. But if you're living in a part of the world where there's just no way you can get your hands on long clear lumber, you can glue it up out of shorter sections. Now, the things to be aware of is that anytime you're gluing up wood like this, you're going to be creating a stiff spot where it's glued together. So you want to, when you're looking at your kayak plan, try to plan your scarf joints into an area where the wood isn't flexing really hard or curving really steeply. Now, also, when you're scarf, making scarf joints like this, it's going to reduce the length of your wood by a few inches. So you want to make sure you plan that into your thinking. So when you're cutting up your boards to glue them together to make your longer boards, your longer boards don't end up being too short. Basically, you want your wood to be a little longer than it's going to need to be in the finished boat. Now, finally, you want the scarf joints to overlap for a significant distance. I don't know the exact strength that is needed for a skin-on-frame kayak, so I always try to err on the side of going longer rather than shorter. So typically, I'm cutting a 16 to 1 scarf joint, which in the real world translates into about a 12 inch long cut over 3 quarters of an inch of thickness. Now, when I cut my scarf joints, I'm going to be cutting them on my wood that is at a full thickness before I plane it down. Because by gluing it up full thickness, then when you plane it down, you're going to be planing out any inaccuracies from your gluing process. So that's kind of the general overview of this. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about the jig. So I'm going to start out here with a five foot long section of two by six. It's important that this board is extremely straight because if it's not straight, your scarf joints aren't going to be straight either. Now, next thing I'm going to do is just come in an inch on one end, and then I'm going to come in four and a half inches on the other end, and then I'm going to connect those two points with a straight edge here. Now, the next thing that you're going to have to do is cut that line, but it's not accurate enough to just do this freehand with a circular saw, and it is not safe to do it freehand on a table saw. You're going to have to either clamp down a guide rail like this, and then follow the guide rail with your circular saw, or you can screw this down to a piece of plywood on your table saw at an angle, and then you can run it through that way. And that's probably going to give you the cleanest, straightest possible cut. Now, once you've done that, you're going to end up with a piece of wood that looks roughly like this right here. So taking a look at this same board from the other end here, you can see that I've cut a couple notches that are exactly one inch in from the edge that we just cut here. And what these are for is so we have somewhere that we can clamp the workpiece onto the jig before we run it through the table saw. So if you imagine that the table saw fence is here and the table saw blade is here, now all you've got to do is push this whole assembly through the table saw and it's going to cut a perfect angle onto this piece right here. Now, before you fire up your saw, it's super important to check to make sure that when your workpiece is clamped onto your jig, it is perfectly square to the surface of your table. Because if it's not, then your taper is going to be cut a little bit skewed, and when you go to clamp your boards together, the boards are going to end up a little bit twisted. Now, if for some reason this comes out slightly off, take a moment and check the other piece that you were cutting because if you cut this jig out of a 2x6, you're going to end up with two identical pieces. And it could be that what happened was that your table saw or your circular saw blade was slightly off angle and one of these is going to give you an angle that's messed up, but the other one's going to give you an angle that's perfect, which is why I really like to make this out of a single piece of 2x6. 
So like I said before, you want to cut these clamping notches one inch in from the edge that the workpiece is going to be clamped to. I like to make them about an inch and a half long and I like to cut them 18 inches away from the ends of the board. Now on the narrow end, this doesn't really matter, but the reason that we're doing this on the wide end is because with the clamp in place, if this clamp is any closer to the end, it could potentially hit your table saw blade as you're pushing the workpiece through. So that's an important detail. Now the easy way to cut these is just to get yourself a 5 8 inch drill bit and drill yourself a couple holes at either end of the marks and then you could just connect it with a jigsaw like that. It can end up a little bit rough, it doesn't really matter, as long as the edge that the workpiece is on is perfectly straight and perfectly square. So one last modification I like to make here is I come to the narrow end of my jig and I cut the side that's opposite the side that we just cut so the two are perfectly parallel to each other. So when I clamp them together, the clamp is gonna hold on nice and tight. And the easy way to do this is just to run your table saw blade up, set your fence to whatever the width of the end of the jig is, and then just run it in a couple inches and pull it back out, and then both these sides would be perfectly parallel. Now, before you fire up your table saw here, it's important to make sure that your table saw and your table saw blade are appropriately matched to the work that you're gonna be doing. So, for example, if you're working on a full-size cabinet maker saw, you can probably get away with a full kerf blade, and even if it's a little bit dull, this is probably gonna work out for you. But if you're working on an underpowered contractor grade saw, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a brand new thin kerf ripping blade so the blade doesn't slow down while you're cutting because once blade speed drops, it starts to burn the wood and burned wood surfaces do not glue safely. So super important to make sure that that blade speed stays up so you've got good clean cuts coming out of there for your glue joint. So why don't we go ahead and set one of these up, go out to the saw and cut a couple scarves. So I'm gonna start out by setting my table saw fence to the width of the wide end of the jig here, and I'm gonna leave myself an extra 64th of an inch beyond that so I don't accidentally cut into my jig. Now, next I'm gonna take the workpiece, I'm gonna put it up against the jig, and I'm gonna make sure it's flush at the end right here. I'm gonna clamp into my clamping notches, and I'm gonna set one more clamp at the end right here. And you can see that with this piece of wood two and a half inches tall, the clamping on this works out perfect and it's just held on here nice and securely. And there's a lot of reasons to do this with two and a half inch tall wood. The first one is that unless you have a really, really good table saw, it's very hard to make a clean cut taller than two and a half inches. Also, the gunnels on my skin on frame kayaks are two and a half inches tall. One of these at two and a half inches tall is easy to split into two stringers. And also, if you're scarfing up this wood to make the laminations for the laminated gunnels for one of my skin on frame canoes, while you technically can do that out of a two inch wide piece, it's much easier to make those laminations if you're working from two and a half inch wide stock. So lots of reasons why it makes sense to go with two and a half. Although if you don't need that, you can always make this shorter and it still works the same way. Now, just a quick word on cutting technique. The way that I do this feels safe for me, but it's not necessarily how other people might think you would safely use a table saw. So I'm gonna explain what I do, and then I'm gonna explain a different way to do this, and you can decide what you think makes sense for you. Now, what I like to do is run this through the table saw blade until the outside piece falls off, and then pull it back out of the blade. Now, the risk there, anytime you're backing up on a circular blade, is that there's a greatly increased risk that it could catch and you could get a violent kickback situation. The reason that I like to do it that way is because I have both hands on the workpiece at all times and I like that feeling of control. Now, the other way you could do this is to put this through the blade until the piece falls off and then keep going for a ways until the blade is sitting significantly away from the workpiece here, and then you could reach down and turn the saw off and wait for it to spin down. Now, the nice thing about that is that you don't have as much of a kickback risk because you're not backing something out of a saw. The reason that I don't like it is because I feel insecure in that moment where I've only got one hand on my workpiece and the blade is still spinning relatively close to the wood right here. I think the ideal situation would be to push it all the way through, 
hold on to it and then have a partner turn off the table saw and wait for it to spin down. So I don't want to encourage anyone to do anything dangerous on a table saw. So I'm not telling you to do this one way or another. And whatever you do, make sure that you've always got really solid control of your workpiece while you're cutting. Okay, so if all went well, you've come back from your table saw with all 10 of your fingers and you've got two perfectly matched tapers. Now, you can see that I've raised the workpiece up onto some blocks right here, and that's just gonna allow me to get around it with the clamp so I can clamp everything nice and tight. The glue that I'm using here is Gorilla Glue, and I like this because it's strong, it's waterproof, and it's really easy to work with. Now, I'm using a couple engagement clamps here to align the pieces, but the actual clamping pressure is gonna be provided by these two inch spring clamps right here. And if you're building a kayak, you're gonna need to have at least 12 of these, 14 is actually a little bit better. And if you're building a canoe, you're gonna have a lot more than that. So I've got some gloves here, put these on to protect my hands. Now, before I put any glue on here, I'm just gonna take a moment and pull the tapers together. And then I'm gonna to check to make sure that the thickness along the scarf joint is the same as the thickness of the board elsewhere. Now, if it's a little bit thinner, you can just push it together like this, or if it's a little bit thicker, you can pull it apart until it's the right thickness. Now, once you like it, you can just get yourself a pencil and you can make yourself some witness marks across the top so you can line those up again after you've already spread the glue on. Now, the instructions on the Gorilla Glue say to lightly moisten one surface and then glue the other surface, but in my experience, unless the wood's really dry or you're in a really dry climate, the moisture really isn't necessary. And if you do decide to put moisture on, you wanna put very little on and then let it dry a little bit first because if this surface is too wet, the glue on this surface is gonna to cure too fast and it expands out of the joint and then it ends up not being as strong. So I'm not gonna moisten this right now, up to you if you wanna do that. I'll go ahead and take the Gorilla Glue here and I'm just gonna spread, it's hard to really describe how much I'm putting on here. My experience with this stuff is that you don't wanna to put too little on but you also definitely don't wanna to put too much on either. So just put about that much Gorilla Glue on and then spread it into a nice even layer. You do have to be covering the entire surface with the glue. It should be well coated, but not super goopy. I've got the glue on here. I'm gonna take the other piece. I'm gonna put it on top. I'm gonna line up my witness marks here. And I've got a couple push pins here that once my witness marks are lined up, I'm gonna push these through the thin end. And what these push pins do is they keep this from sliding while I'm clamping it down. Okay, now I can start clamping this. So I'm gonna take these engagement clamps like this and I'm gonna use these to align the boards because obviously if the boards aren't lined up, then your board is gonna end up crooked. So once I've done that, I'm just gonna look down the line and sight the board to make sure it's nice and straight before I put any more clamps on. Once the board looks like it's straight from the ends, I'm gonna start stacking spring clamps on here. And you wanna put a bunch of these on. Now, if you're a woodworker and you have other clamps and you'd like to do this differently, that's totally up to you. This just works well for me because I'm constantly working with spring clamps. And so it's just an easy source of lots and lots of clamps for me. Now at this point, I'll sight the board one more time, make sure it's nice and straight. And then I'll take off the engagement clamps and I can just finish stacking up clamps all the way to the ends of the tapers here. So both ends all the way until everything that can be clamped is clamped. And I'm just gonna leave this you know, I think you can get away with taking these off after a couple hours. I usually leave them for about four or five hours before I take my clamps off. So once your glue is dry here, you could take a chisel and cut off any of this foamy stuff that is squeezed out of the joint. Now, a super controllable way to work a chisel in this kind of situation is to grab the workpiece and put your thumb right here because not only does that keep your hand in a safe position behind the chisel, but you can use it to guide the chisel and push with both hands at once. You can kind of lever it like that. It's just a really nice, clean way to cut in this kind of a situation. 
So that's pretty much it for gluing up our scarf joint here. At this point, what I'm gonna do is run this through a stationary planer, both to bring it down to my finished thickness, but also just to clean up the glue joint a little bit in here. Now, another thing you could do is just put this down on a nice straight work surface and run a hand power planer across the entire thing. But if you do use a hand power planer, you have to make sure you do the entire board evenly because if you create inconsistencies in thickness, you're gonna create inconsistencies in flex that can potentially affect the shape of your boat. Now, it's nice if you have the wood to do it, just to take a little bit off each side, just because it really cleans up the glue laminations here, but obviously that depends on how much wood you have available and the finished thickness you're trying to get to. If it looks a little bit ugly, that's an aesthetic issue, but it's definitely not a functional issue. So that's the method that I use to scarf up the long wood for my kayak gunnels, my kayak stringers, the laminations for a longer canoe gunnel, basically any time that I need to make longer wood if I don't have longer wood available. But like I said in the beginning, this is not something I usually do because I do have long wood available. So anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can also check us out on our website, which is capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a bunch more skin on frame building videos and various skin on frame resources. You can find me on Instagram, at Cape Falcon Builds, where I post a daily build blog of everything I'm doing here in the workshop, including time-lapse videos. All right, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Have fun building your skin boat.